Good afternoon. I'm back in my backyard lab and this time I want to talk about infiltration rate and water holding capacity. So I've taken my same soil that I was doing my bulk density on and I have 200 grams of the sample directly from my garden. I've squished the really big chunks but I really haven't done much to it and I'm just sort of flattening it out a little. It's in a Burleys or a Burleesy Tulgren funnel that I made previously and I have some avocado bag as a filter underneath. This is the same soil except and it's the same Burleys Tulgren funnel setup except this time I pushed it through a kitchen sieve. In a soils lab you would always push it through a two millimeter sieve to get out of anything that's not sand. This is pretty close but not quite but it's good enough for my purposes. It's pretty cheap kitchen sieve. This one actually lives in my backyard. My nephew plays with it in the sandbox. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do, I have a hundred milliliters of water and a hundred milliliters of water. You can do this one sample at a time. I'm choosing to do them at the same time just for fun. <laughs> I've colored the water so that I can see it better. It doesn't matter what color it is. I made it red and blue because those are two very visible colors. And I'm going to time a bunch of things. So I'm going to start my timer on my phone. So the measurements I'm going to take, once I start timing, I'm going to time how long it takes for the very first drop to hit to the bottom for my conductivity and how far I have to measure the depth of the soil, how far that water had to travel. I'm also going to time it until all the water has been down into the soil. So it's just sort of glistening on top. That's for my infiltration rate. And then after all the water is sort of done and it's not constantly dripping. It might still be dripping a little bit, but once the constant dripping is done, I'm then going to take that bottom water and measure the volume of that. So and then I'll know that because this is 100 milliliters, whatever I measure from here, whatever's left over is what's still in the water. And that will give me an idea to water holding capacity. So if I pour these, and you want to be kind of consistent with each one of your samples. So you're doing it. Whoa, look how fast that red one went through. And there goes the blue one. I think I need a buddy. I couldn't have done that physically. That was too much. <laughs> so this one's hit its infiltration rate. This one's still taking a moment. But this one went through faster. And they're still both dripping, so we're not at water holding capacity yet. And despite being a really sandy sample, both of these waters are cloudy now, which says that I have some colloids of clay probably in my soil, which is kind of nice to know as well. So I think if you're going to do this by yourself, you need to be ready to start your timer as you're pouring. That was super fast. I would need a friend to help me. It's interesting because this is the sieved soil sample and this is the wild soil sample and the water flowed through here faster but then took longer as well which is interesting. I'm curious to see which one is holding more water. Red one is 50 milliliters. The blue one is 40 milliliters, which means this one is holding slightly more water. And that makes sense because it's the same weight, but this is finer particles for the same weight, this has some large chunks in it. So it makes sense that this one would be a slightly better water holding capacity. But that's it. That's all it takes to run that activity.